people who don't want to feel guilty about anything but want to keep doing the things that would make them guilty these are going to be the people who have their conscience seared with a hot iron and once that happens they will do things that they know are wrong and not feel guilty about it anymore now they can come out and say what you accusing me of sleeping with that gal well of course i did you know right on you know conscience seared with a hot iron now god has a remedy god has a remedy for the conscience of man and it's not being seared with a hot iron um in uh let's see here first peter chapter three the bible says um in uh, verse 20 uh, the uh, the days of Noah, while the ark was in preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water, the like figure, whereunto even baptism, doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God's answer to your conscience being full of the sin that you know you did is baptism. Not water baptism in a church baptistry which does nothing but even but cleanse the flesh if it's clean water. A lot of people back in the old days, they were baptized down in the river. Rivers are not known for being the cleanest places in the world. Some of them are. And so you're baptized in earthly water. That only would clean your flesh. Only the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. Remember what Paul said, Jesus washes his bride with the water by the Word of God. And so what happens is, you and I sin against God. Our conscience knows that we sin. And so, and the, and the devil will always bring them up. But what happens is, God washes all of our sins away, and we know that, and we believe that because of the Word of God. And we say, you know what, devil? Yeah, I did. I did those things. But there's something else I know now. I know that I've been forgiven. My debt has been cleared by Jesus Christ. That's who I serve. You might have power over my flesh, but I'm telling you, my soul will depart one of these days to be with Jesus for all of eternity. And so your conscience now has been cleaned, and you have a good conscience, in that while you know you sinned, you also know those sins have been forgiven. So God has a, God has a remedy for a, for a defiled conscience. It's a good one. The devil has the opposite. Notice water and hot iron. Heat and cool water, opposites. And so when people have their conscience, and let me bring this back into play too. Anytime I see the word iron, I, I go, iron. Why? Daniel chapter 2, the fourth kingdom, which is the iron kingdom. And the iron is mixed with miry clay. And then Daniel says, <clears throat> the iron is the fourth kingdom, principalities, powers, rules of darkness, spiritual wickedness, that's what Paul said, and the clay is the seed of man. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. And I believe when that happens, man's conscience is seared with a hot iron. So now man, instead of having um, a tendency to want to do right, now man's conscience has been seared and he doesn't care what he does. It's just like it's just like dogs. Dogs don't ever care when it comes time for let's say personal hygiene. They don't really care where they are when they clean themselves, do they? When dogs mate with other dogs, they don't go away somewhere. It's right out there in the open that's where man is headed right now it, and we know that don't we we know that that is where man is headed to be able to declare their sin as Sodom and hide it not in the daytime in full view of everybody and think nothing of it their conscience seared with a hot iron so <clears throat> I think that <clears throat> is related <clears throat> excuse me, to the mark of the beast. When people take this mark, 
I think their conscience is seared with a hot iron. 2 Thessalonians 2, here's another verse I think goes along with it. Promises that God made. 2 Thessalonians 2, we know about it, it's about the man of sin, the son of perdition. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked, capital W, be revealed. By the way, there's a mystery of iniquity in 2 Thessalonians. Then there is a mystery of godliness in 1 Timothy 3.16. They're opposites, and we'll take a look at that later. Uh, that wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's his word. So anytime you've got that wicked one around, let the spirit of God's mouth, his word, consume it. Get it out of the way. The Lord, verse 9 is 2 Thessalonians 2, even him is coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They did not want this. Now, we've got two verses now. Both of them are telling us almost identical things. Let me read the rest of this. Um, verse 11, 2 Thessalonians 2, for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness so we have two verses here first timothy 4 1 there's conscience sealed with a hot iron second thessalonians 2 that says that that god is going to send them strong delusion and they are going to believe a lie so they can be damned and in both cases number one people have their mind changed their heart changed to where they only think one way now they are no longer given two choices. They've already chosen this one. And so then at that, and because of that, or what brings that about is, First Timothy, they, did, they departed from the faith. Second Thessalonians, they received not the love of the truth. You can read Bible verses to them, and they, they'll, say, they'll say, would you cut that out? I don't care nothing about that Bible. Get that, get that thing out of here, okay? You try to hand them a track. I don't want that. They received not the love of the truth. They rejected the word of God. God's grace is here. God's forgiveness is here. God's mercy is here. They said, we don't want anything to do with it because we want to keep sinning. I have, and the people, if there's anybody in the world in America that needs to hear it, it's people in Las Vegas, Nevada. And he tries to give them gospel tracts. Sometimes it works. Most of the time, they'll just get refused or thrown in the trash. You know why? They're not there to get saved. They're there to sin. They're there to get drunk. They're there to sleep with whores. They're there to gamble. That's what they're there to do. And the gospel would just take that away from them, so they don't have anything to do with it. That's, that's going to culminate one of these days. It's all coming to this point where finally God is going to say, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to send you a lie, and you're going to believe it so you can be damned. No chance of salvation after that. None. People, please don't believe these guys telling you that you can get saved after you take the mark of the beast. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Same thing. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Romans 1, 21. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory now of the uncorruptible God. Here it is, right here. This is the uncorruptible God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Into an image made like unto corruptible man, and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and creeping things. One, two, three, four. Fourth kingdom, four things we wrestle against. They changed the glory of this into corruptible man, four-footed beast, creeping things, what else? What did I miss here? And birds. Sorry about that. They changed it. Transformation. Wherefore God also gave them up. He gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God 
into a lie. Same thing you see in 1 Timothy 4. They depart from the faith, speaking lies and hypocrisy. 2 Thessalonians 2. They received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. These people changed the truth of God into an NIV or a message Bible or any of these other new versions of the Bible that had come out. They changed the truth of God um, into a lie. God gave them up um, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up. That's the second time he says it here. He gave them up to uncleanness, and he gave them up unto vile affections. Okay? That is having an affection. That is a man having an affection for another man. Or a woman having an affection for another woman. That is... A man having an affection for a little boy or a little girl or vice versa or a farm animal or whatever. You get the, you get the gist, right? Vile affections. God, now, let me stop right here. Not everybody who has practiced homosexuality has God given over or gave them up. That is, that's false, it's wrong. Paul talked about how he listed off all these sinners that were around. Some were effeminate, some were uh, abusers of themselves with mankind. And then Paul said, and such were some of you. But now you are clean, now you have been washed. And so just performing an act of sodomy on a, someone of the same gender or whatever, maybe, maybe, maybe that's in your past. Maybe it is. Okay? That in it, and, and we know, we know that a majority of those who, who now practice sodomy as a lifestyle, in many cases, they were abused by a same sex family member. Somehow, way back then, the devil got them when they were kids, okay? And that's just how they've been programmed or wired to think throughout their life. But so what happens is that they, um, God gives them up to violence. He gives them up. And let me just say this. If you have had homosexual experiences in your past, and you're afraid that God won't save you and you're afraid that you're gonna die and go to hell because you know what you did was wrong because you listen to Stephen Anderson and West West whatever West Moore Baptist Church up in Kansas that said God hates fags and anybody who does that they're already a reprobate and they're going to hell instant hell for them if you're afraid that because of what you did in your past, you're going to hell. Let me tell you, you still have a conscience that God will work with. Now, it may take years for the Holy Ghost to bring you out with some of the stuff that you put yourself in. But let patience have her perfect work. Let God do what God wants to do in you. Okay? And I'm Again, I'm all for praying for someone who admits and realizes and recognizes that what they did was wrong. I led a man to the Lord like that several years ago. And I know he's in heaven. No doubt in my mind whatsoever. But there are people that God gives up. He gives them up to vile affections. Verse, um, for even their women did change, this verse 26, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Verse 27, and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. The word recompense means payback. You're going to do this? This is how you're going to live? Fine. I will give you the recompense of your error that matches your error. The recompense of their error, I believe, 
is their conscience seared with a hot iron. And now they do this like Ray Bolts. They sodomize men, promote gay marriage, talk about how great it would be if they could marry somebody. They're married to somebody, married to some guy for six months, and then they're out whoring around again with other men. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. God gave them up to vile affections. And God sent them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. God gave them up. God gave them up. God gave them recompense. God gave them over. It's very clear to me, very, very clear to me, that once someone receives that mark, that mark, and, and I've got more to say about the mark and, and how, it, how it's seen in scriptures, but once someone receives that mark, this Bible is right. If you don't believe me, just keep reading Revelation because it'll tell you in no uncertain terms that all of those who receive the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name are cast into the lake of fire. I just believe what the Bible says, and I hope you do too. So I, I've got it in my mind that receiving the mark is not just some uh, credit card they get in the mail with a, with a biometric chip in it. I think it's much, much, much more than that. I think it represents God turning their minds. It's almost like they're little beasts now. And they have no conscience. They just do what they do. Dogs don't have a problem going to sleep at night worried about the things they did. Just, it's just not part of them. And I think that's, that is, to me, that's where, that's where man is headed. So let me just, uh, you know what? Maybe God did want this different because I didn't, I didn't teach it this way the, when I did it earlier today. Um, so here's what I'm going to say to you. I'm going to leave you with this. Whatever's in your past, maybe it's not too far past. Whatever's there, and you still know that it's wrong, and the guilt bearing down on you is just too hard for you to take, and you've already heard somebody on the internet say you're rejected of God. If you still care that what you do will cause you to go to hell, if you still care, you still have a conscience that can have it that God can wash clean. You can still have, along with the knowledge of what you did, you can still have a new knowledge added to that that says you did it but God forgave you 